All right, folks, John Henning here with the Franchise Radio Show, and we're here today with the President of Franchise Development for P3 Cost Analyst, Chris Simonich. Chris, thank you so much for joining us, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, now before we get into the business stuff, I always like to ask a little bit about yourself. If you could just share with us a little bit about your background, kind of how you got into franchising, a little bit about you personally. Sure. This January, this coming January in a few months, will mark 20 years in the industry. So I've been doing it a while. 20 years ago, I was brought in, but into the industry, I had a buddy who got into franchising, did well working for a, a major franchisor and, and then broke off and, and started doing his own consulting and sales development. And he said, you know, I think you could do this too. And, and so I did. So I worked with him for a couple of years. And then by 2005, I, I started going off on my own and I've been offering outsourced franchise development services ever since. Okay. And in addition to franchise development, I've also been a franchisor about 10, 10 years ago or so, decided to try my hand at actually not just selling franchises, but uh, being a franchisor and had a partner and we did very well with that. We had it for a few years, built it up nationally and sold it. And then since then, I've gone back to offering my franchise development services to, to franchisors. So, you know, typically what I do kind of accidentally wasn't on purpose. I just fell into a niche where I usually work with new upcoming brand new franchisors that maybe mm -hmm. have one or three or five locations and they want to go national. And so more than a handful of times I've, I've done that, I've worked with them from the beginning Help them get to you know over a hundred units, so that that seems to be my specialty. Gotcha, gotcha. Now tell us a little bit about the the P three cost analyst. Like exactly what do you guys do? How does that work? Sure. So I, I really love this business model, and I as I mentioned, I, I started working with them right when they were launching their franchise system. So that that's my forte. But what P three does is they do cost reduction, and simply put. What we do, what our franchisees do is our franchisees approach businesses offering to save them money on their bills. Now, specifically, we can audit for companies eight different categories of expense. So these are bills like utility bills or telecom bills, waste, mm -hmm. merchant service bills, which is simply credit card processing fees, small freight shipping bills. So companies that are using you know, FedEx or UPS all day, every day, we can help them out. And there's a few other categories, but what all these bills have in common, John, are these are the bills that 99% of companies, and I'm not exaggerating when I use that. I mean, that literally, it's about as close to 100% as you can get. 99% mm -hmm. of all companies, they get these bills every month and they pretty much just pay them <laughs> as long as the bill doesn't look too drastically different than it did last month. They just pay it, right? Now, most people assume when I say that, that companies are just paying these bills because, hey, we've got bigger things to worry about, right? An electric bill or a phone bill is kind of small potatoes compared to the bigger initiatives in, in any company. Right. Uh, and, and there is some truth to that. I mean, that's not wrong. That is part of the reason why companies just pay these bills. But the much bigger reason is because these industries, the telecom industry, the waste industry, the utility industry, these industries and these vendors have very intentionally created overly complex billing. Yeah. So that if you're a company, you're, you're the customer of these vendors, you can't figure out the bills. And that's by design, right? So that's the real reason companies aren't paying attention to these bills because they got more important things to worry about. It's all, but it's also because they can't do it. And so what we bring to the table at P3 is we have the expertise to pierce this veil of complexity and really get to the bottom of what's going on with these bills. And that's why we can find such meaningful savings for, for clients. You know, when you were explaining that, I, I thought I already knew the answer before you even got into why folks just pay the bills, right? Because even as a consumer, right, and, you know, I'm probably not as busy as many, you know, executives or, or account reps at a, at a busy company, I, I don't even understand the stuff, right? So I can see that intentional scenario there by design type situation, right? Exactly. I, in fact, I use those examples all the time. 
you know, nobody can explain to me, for instance, I'm sure the same is true with you, my personal cell phone bill. Like, you know, <laughs> every, everything is unlimited, right? It's not like the old days where I only got, had so many gigs per month and my kids would use too many gigs and we got sure. uh, charged big charges because of it. Everything's unlimited. And yet my cell phone bill is never the same. Yeah. Ever. It's different every month within a dollar or two, a few pennies. I just got the notification that my bill was automatically paid. And that's another thing too, you know, it's a lot of bills you've got set up on auto pay, right? So that's a, that's interesting. You know, it's, you bring up a really good point there where no two bills are identical, but you know what, if it's similar to last month, my wife's paying the bill, right? And I'm assuming that businesses do it the same way because it's, it's complicated, time consuming and all of that. So you guys are going to come in and take a look at all those categories and help them find savings. Now, how do you guys get paid though? Do they pay you a flat fee for this, a percentage? How does that work? Yeah, great question. So, and I, I think this is one of the highlights of our franchise opportunity and what attracts folks to it. When our franchisees go to market and they approach businesses, they are armed with what I would consider to be a very compelling value proposition because all of our services up front are mm -hmm. contingency based. So basically they're free up front. Our, our pitch is, you know, the, the shorthand version of our pitch anyway, is listen, we're so confident that there's major money to be recovered in your bills. What we're willing to do here at P3 is we'll do a full blown audit on your bills, free of charge with no strings attached, no commitment. Just let us see your bills, let us do our thing. And we're willing to do that because we know that once you see how much money we can save you every month, mm -hmm. you'll want to move forward with us, right? And, and listen, a free audit is not a small thing. You, you know, if we're working with a smaller company, it's going to take us weeks and a larger company will take us months and it's all on us. It's all our time. It's all our labor. So we're really putting our money where our mouth is, right? But like I said, we're willing to do it because we know that most of the time we can find major savings and savings that's far bigger than the, the client imagines. Now, to answer your question, how do we get paid? We're not charging up front, so it's contingency based, which means sure. we're going to share in the savings, right? And so we say, listen, we'll do all this work for up front, but whatever we find, we're going to split 50-50. And, and that's 50% to the client and 50% to P3. And we'll share in that for every month for, for years in, in the future. And so that's how we get paid. And, okay. and that, what that allows our franchisees to do is to create monthly recurring revenue. So they're getting a percentage of what their clients are saving every month for years. And, and that's one of the... I'd say that's an even bigger highlight than offering free services up front is this ability to build long-term monthly recurring revenue. That's what we're offering our franchisees. Good deal. That sounds really powerful. I'm, I'm a personal proponent of recurring monthly revenue. Before I get into, I want to talk in just a minute about the day in the life of an owner, but I want to circle back because you got me excited and I kind of got off track there. I apologize. I want to, I want to chat real quick about the history of the company. Walk me through how the company became a franchise. Was this intentionally set up as a franchise, accidental? Like, how did the company become a franchise? Yeah, so the short version of our history is P3 Cost Analyst is actually the merger of two companies, two cost reduction companies. One in North Carolina was founded in 1991, so been around for 31 years now. The other company in Arkansas was founded in 2004, so that's 18 years now. And uh, those two companies merged a few years ago for various reasons, but one of the reasons, possessed by my founder and, and CEO, Aaron Stahl, was mm -hmm. he had an eye to franchises. So when, when he bought out the other company, merged the two together, there was always kind of a long distance vision of someday I'd like to franchise this. So that was always very intentional. And, you know, to hear Aaron tell the story, it's the, the motivation behind franchising was really had a lot to do with the lifestyle that this business model creates. So 
Aaron, not to tell his story for him, but he was a business major, graduated University of Arkansas, and at 22 years old, got into the cost reduction business, right? Okay. Um, you know, I don't think he can claim any grand designs of how it was going to be, you know, how it was going to go over the next 20 years. But, you know, eight to 10 years later, when he was 30, 32 years old, he had built such a big business with such a significant monthly recurring revenue stream that he likes to tell the story where he went to South America for six months, took a sabbatical, took off six months of work. And every month he was away in South America, he made the same amount of money that he always did. But it wasn't really until he came back and was talking to friends and acquaintances who were also you know, business majors and entrepreneurs, where it was their reaction to what he had built, where they were like, hey, Aaron, you know, what do you do? I want to do what you do. Because they had also built successful businesses. But the difference right. is when they, if they were to take six months off, they would make zero dollars and maybe never be able to resurrect their business when they came back. So that's when Aaron started to realize that, you know, being, being successful in any business is great, but there is this kind of holy grail to business that a, a lot of people have where, you know, they want to build something that sustains not only without their oversight, but even without their involvement at all. Right. Sure. And so that's where he realized there's different ways you can expand nationally, but franchising became the number one option for Aaron because not only could he expand his cost reduction services nationally, but he could actually teach people how to create this lifestyle business, which is, is a very important part of what we're offering folks. You know, talking about that lifestyle, let's talk a little bit about your franchise owners out there. Kind of give us an idea of who are your franchise owners? And then walk us through kind of like a, a day in the life. Like, what am I doing if I own the franchise? Yeah. Well, I think before I answer that question, I need to tell you a little bit about how our franchise model is set up. To give you okay. some background. Because our franchise model is set up rather uniquely in that, you know, with, you know, a combination of what is, you know, 32 years or, you know, 31 years plus 18 years. It's, it's a lot of years, 50, 60 years of, of cost reduction experience between the two companies that merged. Mm -hmm. We've been able to do today in 2022 is we've been able to build over time and now maintain a centralized back office at the corporate office where we do all of the operational fulfillment for the franchisees. So, when I say we do all the operational fulfillment, here's what I mean. Number one, we at P3, the franchise, or we do all the auditing. So we're not teaching franchisees to be auditors, to pour line gotcha. by line the boring bills. They're not doing that. And just as importantly, they're not going to have to eventually, as their business grows, have to hire their own auditors and manage that team. No, they've got a turnkey team of auditors. As many clients as the, as the franchisee can sign up we will audit the bills for them, okay? So that's number one, we do all the auditing. We also do all the vendor relations. And that's really just a nice way of saying, we are the ones that get on the phone and haggle with the vendors, right? Because the auditors do an audit, produce an audit report, say, hey, this is how much money we can save you every month. That's great, you see all those paper savings, but someone's gotta pick up the phone and start dealing with the utility vendor and the telecom vendor and the waste vendor and get these bills lower. So the client sure. actually is saving this money. We do all that. So the clients will never, or I'm sorry, the franchisees will never be on the phone haggling with vendors, never, never. Also the clients will never be on the phone haggling with vendors. So we take care of all that. And then lastly, we also do all the monthly invoicing and collections for the franchisees businesses. So every month we actually stay actively involved in the client's bills. We don't just do an audit lower the bills and then we're done. Mm -hmm. We, you know, because we just, you know, earlier we talked about how these industries are set up to create overly complex billing. Right. And why they do that is that allows them to slowly price creep over time. So if we just do an audit and then that's it and then leave the clients to it, the same thing is just gonna start over again. The, the billing will continue and the price creep will continue and eventually the client will end up right back to where they were. So instead, we kind of take over these bills for the client and we get them down for them, but to keep them down, someone's gonna stay on top of them. So every month 
we get copied on their on their bills mm -hmm. and we make sure they're correct. Once we know they're correct, then we send out an invoice for our 50% of the, of the savings that month. And we also have all the collections. So all of that is taken off the plate of the franchisee. And so okay. to answer your question about what's the franchisee doing all day, every day? Well, with all that taken off their plate, it's pretty simple. We're, we're doing all that to free our franchisees up to focus on sales and scaling their business. So, you know, I, I would say realistically, day to day, week to week, I would say about 80% of our franchisees' time is spent in an outbound B2B sales role where they're prospecting, approaching businesses, setting appointments, selling, closing, onboarding. That's where most of their time is spent day to day. And I would say, you know, the other 20% of their time over time is, is just simply account management, just taking sure. care of their existing clients because they are still always involved. They're, they're not just signing up clients, handing them off to us and that's it. They're, they are the liaison between what the operations team is doing for the client and the client. They're always that bridge, so. Chris, what's a typical client? Am I working with pizza shops or big, huge Amazon warehouses? Like who's my client as a franchise owner? Our sweet spot for clients are companies that have anywhere between 20 million in revenue annually, all the way up to about 500 million. In okay. revenue. And, you know, to kind of put some explanation on those bookends, because people kind of think, oh, well, anything smaller than 20 million or anything bigger than 500 million, we can't help them or they're already doing it themselves. Neither of those things are true. On the lower end, for a company smaller than 20 million, we can certainly help them and save them money. But what our franchisees figure out, either the easy way or the hard way, is that it's just as much work to sign up the $2 million client as the $20 million client. Yep. It's the same. So you know, why don't you make 10 times more money signing up the $20 million client because it's no more work. Now, on the low end, there is one major exception, which happens all the time. And that is, we're happy to work with a $2 million a year restaurant if they're part of a bigger multi-unit network, sure, right? Sure. So the owner says, hey, I've got 10 of these restaurants. We're all in for that all day long. Now, on the opposite end of that spectrum, a, you know, a company over 500 million, a billion dollar company, let's say, can we help them? Absolutely. Are they already doing this themselves? Absolutely not. For sure not. And we can save them a lot of money and the franchisee will make a lot of money for a long time if they sign up that billion dollar fund. So you should go after if you're a franchisee. But it's not our sweet spot. We don't want you only going after billion dollar clients. And, sure. And, the, and the, the simple answer, the reason why is because once you get up in that stratosphere, mm -hmm. the sale takes a lot longer. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. yeah. So it might take you a year to sign it up. And if you do sign that billion dollar client up, will it be worth it? You betcha. But it's nice to get a, a 50, $80 million client in there where you can start making money a lot faster. Chris, can we talk a little bit about the uh, the cost of entry? Like, what does it cost me to start the franchise? Uh, you know, how much money do I need to bring to the table? Yeah, our franchise fee is $59,500. The good news is the total investment is really in the same neighborhood. You know, we don't have any uh, other major expense. We have no location. This is home-based. We don't have equipment. We don't have vehicles. We don't even have staff. You know, franchisees can work from home and they should, they almost always start with just themselves selling this. I would say, you know, projecting our franchise system out into the future, I'd say probably half of my system plans on staying just a single operator. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a, an opportunity where they can make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in monthly recurring revenue and do it all by themselves. You know, so for, for half of my system, part of the attraction of P3 is that, wait, I can make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and not have the headaches of a sales team that I'm managing, not have employees, and they love that. I'd say the other half of my system has plans 
-hmm. to eventually start hiring salespeople underneath them and build this out and scale it in, in a bigger way. But you know, at the beginning, your first year or two, there there is no major ongoing expense at all. Uh, with the exception of of what you're paying P3 to do all that operational work for you. That's it. There, there's nothing sure. else. So getting back to original question, our FDD says that the total investment could be anywhere between you know 65 and 80, but really that's just if you go on a shopping spree to get your business started. Above this 59.5 to get in this business, there's very little expense. There'll be some things you got to establish an LLC. And so there's administrative things like that, but sure. we're not even traveling for training anymore. We we moved virtual training because of COVID and it's been so successful that we've kept it there. So there's very little expense above the franchise fee. I'm sure folks like to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. We always like to keep, keep costs low when you start up a business, right? Yeah. 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 Hey, let's talk a little bit about the industry. Tell me a little bit about the industry, where it's headed. What what makes your company unique in the space? Okay. Well, a couple of comments on the industry and, and competition. There, there is competition. We have competitors. We're not the only ones doing it out here. However, day-to-day -day in the life of a franchisee, mm -hmm. competition is not really a factor. And, and don't get me wrong. We have our own challenges like any business and you know, sales in and of itself is, is always a challenge, no matter what you're selling, even when you're selling something for you know, free upfront, contingency based. So we're not without our own you know, objections to handle and our own challenges to overcome, but competition is really not one of them. When we call up a company, they probably have heard of services like this, but the majority of them have never had an audit done like we're proposing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I got it done like this. And the idea that you would ever be in like a competitive head-to-head -head scenario where a company is saying, Hey, John, I'm glad you called. You know, I'm talking to another cost reduction company. So I'll get bids from both of you and see who treats me. That that almost never happens. And if it does happen, it's just really unlucky. So gotcha, gotcha. I see. That, that that's that's not a big factor for us. Now, what sets us apart? I would say there's a number of things, but the, the biggest thing I would say is that it is kind of what I talked about earlier. We, to the best of my knowledge, we're the only one, maybe there's others, but there'd be very few. We're the only cost reduction company that I know of that stays so actively involved in the mm -hmm. client's business after the initial audit. So, you know, what that allows us to do is to have a much longer relationship with the client. And there's two major advantages to that. One is obvious, you know, the typical agreement that our franchisees are signing up their clients to, mm -hmm. five-year agreement, which is much longer than the industry standard. Okay. And without getting too in the weeds, you know, about how we can do that and, and why we can do that, but the reason why we're able to do that is because most traditional cost reduction companies, they do the free audit just like we do with a shared savings plan of a 50-50 split, just like we do. But when the audit's done and the client's bills are lowered, you know, figuratively speaking, that traditional cost reduction company's sitting on the beach sure. while the client has to pay them for two or three years. Our clients are setting up the five-year agreements because we're going to stay actively involved month to month, not only get these bills down, but to keep them down. So the first advantage is that my franchisees are signing up clients to a 60% longer contract, which means a 60% longer run on their monthly recurring revenue. Mm -hmm. That's one major advantage. The other advantage is by having such a long relationship with their clients, it allows them to develop a, a closer relationship and allows us to keep going back to our existing client base and offering new categories to audit. So, you know, three years ago, when we started franchising, we were auditing three categories. Three mm. years later, we're auditing eight, right? So my franchisees with 20 clients, 50 clients, I have a couple of franchisees with 100 clients. They can just keep going back to their existing client base and say, hey, now we ordered a ninth category, now a 10th yeah. category, an 11th category. And so even those small clients that may only be worth initially, you know, 
two three hundred dollars a month to the franchisee those clients can grow with you know by just upselling more categories over time and it's a value add for the client they'll save more money it's great for the franchisee they're capitalizing on that relationship with almost no resistance right hey you're already saving more money what bills do you need yeah. so that that's that's an integral part of our business model but when you when the franchisees are looking at this business long term big picture that's a big deal I like that. Yeah, I like those two things you pointed out there, specifically the the ability to build that longer term relationship, which then results in a longer term revenue stream as well, right? Yep. But the comparison you made, and and thank you earlier too. I didn't mention this on the quote competition. I would assume that competition is really like a status quo competition, right? The, the yeah. company just kind of just keeps floating along and paying the bills, right? You're so that, absolutely that right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's inertia, right? It's probably yep. a it's competition. Yep, yep. And then I really like the ongoing involvement with the client as well. And like you just mentioned, three years ago, you had this many categories. Now you've got this many because we don't even know what the next big expense is going to be. I mean, look, 15 years ago, none of us had a cell phone bill, right? Right. Okay. Now we do, and it's completely different than it used to be on the landline, right? So it's it's you never know what's going to be the next category. And you've got, I'm assuming... You've got the resources in place to do those additional audits when those new categories are now available or, or are created by a certain industry, right? So you've got the, the back-end resources. All the franchisee has to do is go back out to the client base, educate them on the new category that they can help them save money on. And like you said, I'm already helping you save money. Why wouldn't we help you save more, right? Well said. That's exactly I love it. it. I love it. Well, Chris, I want to give you the last couple of minutes here to kind of give us, you know, why, why should somebody reach out to you? How should they reach out to you? What's the best way to reach out to you guys? Anything else that, that I missed in the interview here that you want to make sure that we touch on? I'll give you the last couple of minutes here to close things out. Yeah, no, it's been great. You asked all the right questions. So I appreciate it. You know, I would say, I don't know if I answered this question directly. So I kind of talked about what the franchisees are doing every day. It may not need to be said, but I'm going to say it anyway. So, you know, who will appreciate our, our model? Um, mm -hmm. It's one of two, it's one of two kinds of folks. I would say the more obvious uh, profile is somebody who's done B2B sales. Typically, if you've done B2B sales in any other industry, when you take a look at P3, you'll perceive our sale as easier. And, and again, we have our own challenges. I don't want to make it sound too easy, but if you've been selling software or metal equipment or financial services or anything where a B2B client has had to cut you a check to start the relationship, yeah. then you know, I think you can come into P3 and, and, and take those same skills you've learned and, and really build a nice recurring revenue stream for yourself. The other kind of person is somebody who, who doesn't have that background, but if they're open to sales and they, they really think they can do it and they're cut out for it. We've had success stories with, you know, franchisees had no sales experience whatsoever, but they had the, the discipline and they had the work ethic and they, they, they were willing to learn our, you know, embrace our training, our 30 years of, of experience. And, and they've taken this and run with it. So that's who I think, you know, would enjoy our franchise, especially anybody who would appreciate a home-based, no overhead, no staff, you don't have to worry, you know, in today's climate about hiring and how hard it is. It's not an issue for us. And, and certainly anybody who appreciates that, that recurring revenue, but folks can reach me at Chris, K-R-I-S at costanalysts.com. So costanalysts with an S.com. You're all also welcome to give me a ring at 815-780-0307. Zero seven, or you can go to the <clears throat> P3 Cost Analyst website, which is costanalysts.com, and you can inquire there, and that'll get find its way to me as well. All right, good deal. I'll make sure to include all the contact information in there as well for everybody as they're listening through. They'll be able to look right below here on the audio and, and be able to click and, and call you guys as well. Well, Chris, thank you so much for all that good information, buddy. I appreciate it. We were joined here on the Franchise Radio Show. Chris Simonich, President of Franchise Development for P3 Cost Analysts. Chris, thank you so much for your time, buddy. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. It was wonderful to be here.